Tatiana, I want to bring you in on that. Uh, you know, the, 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 sudden, the, the sudden shift in the tone. After all that defiance, President Zelensky now saying we are not pressing for NATO membership. We are willing to negotiate and compromise, you know, on those eastern regions and Crimea. How do you see that? Is that, a, is that being seen as, uh, you know, a softening of stance, a climb down, a realization of the situation? Good day to you too. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I wish... Uh all of the strength uh, possible to your colleague who is in Kiev. Um, when it comes to President Zelensky's stance, I think that the, the basic message here is that the uh, overall stance of his Western, uh, you know, well, allies or patrons is starting to finally sink in. I'm sure you've been following, you know, the, the recent communication, that whole kind of tug of war between Poland and the US uh, about the military yes. uh, jets yes. that uh, were on the, you know, on the cars and that Poland was kind of saying, well, we, we might give those jets to Ukraine and the whole thing was you know is just another example of the fact that Ukraine was literally pushed under the bus they were led in a wrong direction uh, you know because the US ended up saying that look, look if you give them yourselves mm. then we might will will support you but we will not kind of you know condone we will not give a green light to this officially um, that's a very important message I think from the uh, uh, the United States uh, because uh, you know that the Russian Ministry of Defense has just made public the documents that confirm that there was a plan to advance on Donbass region in the works, that this move by the Russian Federation, you know, that uh, special operation was literally uh, a choice to not have this war on our territory, basically. Hmm. Uh, you know, it was a choice to protect the people of Donbass region who have endured enough. And um, I find it a very timely, actually, you know, that uh, the Ukrainian president is finally realizing that he was literally pushed into something. Uh, unfortunately, you know, for eight years, he was being kind of pampered, you know, to get into this confrontation by the West that is not going to stand by Ukraine and was not never planning to, you know, they're going to use this as an excuse to uh, to bring in more troops into Poland, to bring in more troops into the Baltic states. Um, hopefully that is the case. However, you know, President Zelensky has proven himself to be a very good um you know, public figure. He's he he does very good speeches. Obviously, yep. that yep. is his kind of you know that's that's his area of expertise, speaking publicly. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see if his stance is really changing. If he's finally realizing the mistakes that he's actually done so far. Uh, Tatiana, in your view, by by now claiming that we are not pressing for a NATO membership, you know, we are willing to compromise on these eastern regions and Crimea. How, in your perspective as a journalist, how do you think that will be perceived by Moscow? Will that be seen as, uh, you know, a kind of peace move, something that can be latched on to to sort of calm the situation down? Or will, you know, everything continue as it is right now? Well, you see, that's a matter of, you know, um, basically, if he puts it in writing, hmm. Uh, if if you've been listening to what Moscow has been saying this whole time, yes. uh, this was the, the general demand and the general uh, approach to this is that, you know, you promise to not enter any blocks and you promise to respect the sovereignty and stop killing people in the Donbass region. And you respect the sovereignty of Crimea, you know, the choice that Crimeans made all those years back. Uh, that they are still to this day very happy about, uh, you know. So if it's put in writing, I think that this is going to be perceived very well by Moscow. But um, you and I both know as journalists that it's one thing to say something and, and it's another it thing writing. to, mm -hmm. yeah. yes, to put it in writing and to actually, even if you do put it in writing, you know, you remember the accords that NATO struck saying that they're not going to go eastward and look at this, you know, we're in 2022 and NATO is literally all around Russia, apart from, you know, still not in Ukraine, although that's questionable because we've literally published pictures of, you know, NATO 
um, uh, military supplies that were found in the uh, compounds of the nationalist battalions yeah. uh, in Ukraine. So, you know, if should it be put in officially put in writing, because uh, again, you know, we've had Minsk agreements, they were put in writing mm. and then they were broken over and over and over again. Hopefully, the, uh, President Zelensky has realized by now that he is alone in this, yeah. unfortunately, it, it, and it, has is started it, is it a, thinking is it a, about Tatiana, his Tatiana, is it, you know, after all these, after two weeks of, uh, you know, global adulation by many countries, he, uh, Zelensky has been hailed as a hero, you know, standing up against the advancing Russian army. He's been portrayed as this heroic figure who is defiantly holding out from Kiev and, you know, sending out all those messages. By now saying, he hasn't put it in paper, you're absolutely right, but by saying now that he's not pressing for NATO membership, is this the first time, in your view, that a sense of, uh, you know, is this the first big reality check? and a practicality that has sort of come in to what the situation is really about, that NATO is not going to be there for him. I hope, I hope that his countrymen realize this, just what we're talking about right now. Hmm. Uh, you know, because this situation right now, um, I, I'm not sure how closely you're following Western headlines. Yes, I am. Um, yep. I obviously have to follow them very closely. Yep. Um, but for the past several days, um, you know, the question on the agenda was the NATO fly zone. And that reminds me so much of 2014. You know, this one thing that they take and that they make it so kind of, you know, without explaining how it's actually done. Yeah. You know, the fact that uh, you cannot really impose just, you know, say, look, we're imposing a no flight zone. That means that NATO is getting literally has to get involved, has Correct. to literally declare yeah. war against Russia. And nobody's explaining that. But they're all calling saying, look, NATO, please, uh, you know, make a no fly zone over Ukraine. Um, and the people, you know, people like bold statements, you know, people like those kind of big uh, words that, you know, the slogans that they can go behind. That was the same thing in 2013 mm. when they went into the streets in Kiev, when they, for some reason, they thought that this association agreement that the uh, president at that time, Yanukovych, did not sign, yeah. was meant that they're going to literally be part of Europe and they're not going to have any visas. And that yes. was not even the case, you know, it was not on the in that agreement. That mm. agreement essentially was first, for, first and foremost was economic and it would have bankrupted the country. In the meantime, in the media, especially in the Western media, it was spun a whole different way, you know. And I'm yeah. hoping that this media hysteria um, is going to slightly be dying down and that the people are going to start listening to their own president and looking at the, you know, at the logical small steps, because it's not about the, you know, big pictures. Anybody with a very, uh, very basic knowledge of video editing can edit a video that would make everybody cry. <laughs> I can yeah. do that. I mean, I've spent enough time working on TV. I can I can take you know a couple of pictures of crying women you know and they're not even crying because they're being killed they're just scared because they're in a bomb shelter and that's very understandable but the media hysteria that's saying look I mean they're killing they they they're going to bomb the hell out of Kiev but that still hasn't happened because Russia has been avoiding civilian casualties they are adamant to start evacuating to finish evacuating civilians before anything can, you know, can actually happen. But, but otherwise, but, yeah, I okay. mean, come on, mm -hmm. we would have had bomber jets in the air two weeks ago. Okay. I mean, it's as simple as that. You know that there, bombing there, a, st there a, is, a city however, to a bit. There is, however, simple. quite a bit of damage uh, visible in many cities. But uh, uh, let's just go to the big picture for a, for a, for a minute to talk uh, finally, uh, Tatiana, about uh, Biden banning Russian oil. Uh, you know, the Russian government has responded to that about gas uh, for the rest of Europe. Uh, the, the economic sanctions, you know, the, the trading of economic sanctions at this point of time is also escalating. With this, with this new uh, sort of reality check, really, from Zelensky's office, and let's again remind our viewers it's not in writing, it's only verbal, do you think the sanctions will also kind of slow down right now? 
I think that uh, with the sanctions, uh, you know, it uh, well, obviously, you know, you've, you, we've said it, you've said it, I've said it, it's been two weeks. Yep. It's very simple to impose something during two weeks. Um, if you look at the um, the actual, you know, we've been talking about, and it's been very much, you know, sensationalized in the, again, in the Western media, that all of the Western brands are leaving Russia. They're not mm -hmm. leaving, really. Um, you know, if you look at IKEA, that they were one of the first to announce that they're not they're not leaving. They're stopping all operations for three months because they're hoping that in those three months, uh, the logistics of all of it, because obviously, you know, the airspace is have been closed, etc. The logistics have taken a huge hit. Yes. So they're hoping that in three months, the logistics will come back to normal. It was the same scenario with all Scandinavian brands. So Hennes and Mauritz, you know, the huge conglomerate that um, does, uh, you know, clothing and stuff. Yes. Uh, they've said that, again, they're pausing everything until May. Right. That is not what is being said in the Western media. You know, uh, I have my iPhone. I'm, unfortunately, I can't show it to you because that's what I use for Zoom. Right. Uh, Apple Pay works all over Moscow, you know, still. Everything works. So these are, these the are meantime, temporary reactions you're saying? Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. Uh, we're, if we're talking about the bigger picture, hmm. then uh, we have to realize and to remember that Every single sanction has it has an action and has a reaction right. uh, on the other side of things. Uh, the prices for oil and gas have rocketed, skyrocketed. Uh, Europe is already in fuel debt, in fuel poverty. Uh, can they last with these sanctions until until autumn, or God yes. forbid, winter? That is a big question. Right, right. It's, the same it's the same thing with the US. They also have a lot of trouble domestically, economical troubles. And I'm not quite sure that the amount of money that their military contractors and suppliers are going to make on this conflict, you mm -hmm. know, and obviously any type of, uh, you know, military action is first of all economical for those who supply weapons. And the right. US has mm -hmm. been supplying weapons, a lot of them. Many, yeah. But that's not going to make up that big, huge hole that they're right now digging themselves into. Look, they're okay. even ready now to talk to Venezuela about this oil. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. The things, the, the things, is the it things that enough? this crisis have changed, huh, Tatiana? The things that this crisis has oh, actually yeah. made possible and enabled. I mean, uh, we're learning something new about the possibilities of geopolitics every day as part of this crisis. But but thank you very much, Tatiana. We, it's always a pleasure speaking to you and getting that perspective uh, from Moscow. We'll keep coming back to you.